Um, welcome back to uh, part two of how I make a knife. Um, so yeah, I think um, on this particular one, I'm going to be showing you, um, hopefully with a couple of little tips of um, basically I'm going to drill the tang. Um, then they'll all be, they need a bit of a clean up. I'll then be taking the 45s off of the blade because that just saves a lot of wear and tear on the heavier belts after heat treat. Um, then it'd be a case of cleaning up and then we're ready for the heat treatment. Um, so yeah, so I will uh, crack on. Initially what I do is, I always do pilot holes to start with, so I'm doing a set of 3mm pilot holes. Then it's a case of with each set deciding the size of um, the remaining holes, both for the lanyard tube and whether I'm using pins, mosaic pins, um, loveless bolts or you know, whatever's going in there. So I generally just do a mix about when I'm doing them myself, just to just keep things interesting. Um, obviously if I'm not doing something that somebody's requested. So uh, anyway, we'll start off. Here we go. Really. And hopefully you can see all the little the little curls. See, I'm now going to be doing all of them at eight mil because that's the ones I'll be putting in here. Although I do use ten mil sometimes, but uh, these are going to be eights. Lift right. it up all around, keep it nice and, and drill to centre itself. Centre the work. here with this batch. Next job is a quick deburr. The first check for straightness and then I'm going to clean off the blue in now. Um, it just because if you don't it just tends to get everywhere and it clog it gets onto the belts and on the grinder and all sorts so I just like to clean that off. Just a little bit of petrol. Um, just got a bit of old petrol. I've got anything like that will do. So jobs like this. So there we are, we've cleaned up to that point. There we go. Now it's onto the uh, grinder. Um, I'm take the edges up to 240 and then uh, clean her up. So here we go. go.
for the 120 I'm back onto the 120 but this time it's uh, hand sanding this just makes me give me a reassurance everything is flat and exactly where it's meant to be and I've left no little marks with the wheel yeah and then that's a finish then with a 240 and then she's ready for the I go to 240 because I find that gives me a good key with the ATP I use to stop any uh, decarving from the uh, heat treatment process. I always work straight on, 45 degrees. Washing up the quid. cloth again trying to reduce any chance of anything that might have dyes or colours or oils or anything that will go onto the steel because that reduces this is the one thing I've found this and warming the steel carefully are the main things I've found to give me a really good really good bond with the uh, ATP and I get virtually no well I don't get any decarb at all there's nothing the blades come out absolutely clean and it takes two minutes to clean up with the uh, Rinsed again, hot water as hot as I can get it. White tissues, again, not putting anything onto the blade. Get it nice and dry. Onto the side. And uh, that's number one. I'm going to make sure you've got the ATP really, really well mixed in. I water this down about sort of like 10 to 20 percent finish. I just find it flows a little better. It doesn't go as clumpy as it does when you first get it. When you first get it, there's often a big lump in there. So now it's on to just warming up the blade. Um, I found that even with using um, a gas torch, I felt I got a residue on the blade. So I bought a hot air gun and I used a hot air gun. I forgot my last check of straightness after doing all the cleaning. So I'll go make sure I haven't affected anything. Lovely. That's what you get for uh, doing two jobs at once. Mm. Beautiful, perfect.
Вон. And we're away. Ready to warm the oil. Straight, nice and steady. Just a bit hot to hold still, which is just spot on. Blades come out lovely and clean. Really nice. Right now, this little window of keeping everything ready. Right, and check for any warp. Bloody hell, that's good. And two. This is a tapered tang, so obviously I've got to try and. Uh, First bit and then jump down that taper. Yep. Yep. Well, I'm happy with that one. That's uh, good. Normally, when I film anything, it goes completely bad. So that's quite good. And then from there. To keep this warm, into my little toaster oven, keep the temperature up and then I've got plenty of time. The plan will be I'll do the rest of them now um, and once I've done the rest of them they'll get about, I'll, I won't rush because the last one gets about 10 to 15 minutes in the toaster oven, just keeping that temperature up around the 50-60 degree mark and then it'll be off to do the uh, first temper cycle. So, see you in a moment. Oh, we're out of the... Uh, Another time now, give them a bit of a time. We've got to allow, say, allow about 15 minutes for the last one, and that's for the um, well, for the martensite to form, basically. I believe I get mixed up sometimes with all that, the austenite and martensite and all the rest of it. But anyway, the blades are all wrapped up in a couple of layers of towel. I don't want the temperature dropping, and we're off up now. And the first temper cycle will be in the uh, house oven, but I do this one at 200 degrees. And I know that that brings the blades out around the 61 mark, so that's okay. So even if it's, it gives me a bit of leeway then, especially because the first cycle is two hours. So they're going to go into there for two hours. Let's just set you up. There we go. So that's they're going to go into there at uh, 200 degrees for two hours. And one thing, if anybody's doing anything like this, when you're actually moving around, even though they're still warm, I try and limit the amount of movement that they actually get. Because again, you don't want just just air going around them. And the last one, I normally do four, but I've got a commission going on, so that's, I'll have to do five this time. Right, that's in, 200. Um, as you can see here, I also keep a uh, thermometer, so that obviously lets me know that you know what that's doing. And I've done a lot of tests on this oven, um, so I can actually pretty much get the results I want. But the problem is, I'm around. So if, if I aim for a 59, I will get between 58 and a half and 59 and a half using this oven. So that's why now I'll, I've got into the habit now I do a 200 cycle for two hours. That's my first temper cycle. After that, I can take my time because also I've actually got the knives that are in there. We need different Rockwells when they're finished. So there's a couple of bushcrafters 
um, a camp knife and a bushman's knife. Um, now the camp knife and the bushman's, I'll, the camp knife will go to about 58, the crafter's about 59. Now the bushman, um, I don't, I'll probably go about 59 with that to be honest, so I'll probably put, just put that in with the bush crafters. But the last temper cycle for the uh, camp knife will have to be higher so it'll go on its own. But once I've got them into here and doing this, I can get that fine tuning on my kiln in the garage. I've got to let it cool down, so I've now got two hours to let that cool down and then get it running at the temper cycle I want. Um, and it's just, that then gives me, I'm with it, I'm in less than half a degree of um, when I tweak it on that. So that's what I'm finding. So I'm literally, I'm, I'm as close as I can get. I've just recently sent for the equipment I need to set a PID up so I can put a PID. So I'm going to have a, a smart by a new smaller oven, which I'll just keep for tempering and um, scales and things like that. And that'll have a pit on it, so I'll be even, hopefully then I'll be I'll be within a, like a point one or point two or something daft like that of the rock wells I'm aiming at, so I can get it as close as I can. I use so the combination of this oven and my kiln, I can get to within less than half a degree, but I want it even lower. So there we are. That's it. Back to the hand sanding. So there we are. That's the uh, first temper cycle done. Two hours down. Now, fingers crossed, everything's okay out with the kiln. And uh, these are cooled down now, so it's off down to uh, pop them in the kiln for the next hour. Right. That's the one, last one done. There we go. It's gonna come out for uh, when they're out to cool. And then uh, clean them up a bit and we can uh, check the rock well on them. Oops, kiln. Oops, bump. Pegs out to let it cool down nice and slow. And good night, Vienna. There we go. It's a heat tree done. Next job, once they've cooled down, it'll be tomorrow now. I'll let them cool down, I'll give them a clean up. And then, uh, oh, check the rock well on them. Catch on that one. Well, finished off uh, the heat treat yesterday. Um, hope the fan didn't bother anything. Um, so um, I've just had a bit of a clean up with the blaze. It's basically just getting any of the gunk off, making sure there's no ATP or anything on there, because any, anything like that will affect the actual readings. Uh, the first one, I'm, I've got one on here. This is going to be a hunting knife, so I'm hoping for around, <laughs> no, she said hoping, it's always a hope. I'm hoping for approximately uh, a 60 is what I've tempered for. Hit the dial, and away she goes. And as always, fingers crossed, it's probably the first time I'll find out if anything's not working right. At least you can always repeat the heat treat. I think I'll be happy with that. So that's the first one. That's that one then, just to give a bit of an example. I've got hopefully uh, she'll be coming out closer to the sort of the uh, 58 mark. One, two, and three, so about there. Fifty seven. So yep, fifty seven, fifty eight, happy with that for a camp knife. I'm thinking about dropping them to fifty six actually, but uh fifty seven, fifty eight I'm happy with that. And then we've got one of my one of the wasps. Um now this is gonna be these are a bit of a sort of a more of a general purpose model. So what I'm hoping for is is I was gonna go for about a fifty eight. So it's just a little bit softer than the normal wood law, which I take to a fifty nine. Um is and let's see where we get with that one. So I've been pretty close up to now. Good up. 
58 just over the 58 just a fraction of it so yep so they've all come out uh, certainly within the the area i'm looking at like i say if i can get get within sort of like if i'm aiming at 59 if i'm between 58 and a half and 59 and a half i'm pretty happy with that and that's like i say why i'm now gonna i've just invested in a a pit controller so i can uh, try and get a slightly more accurate um just that scratch mark it pull in another pull a half a degree in on the uh on the uh, tempering but uh, other than that i'm happy with that so next job